Gardner, Ward, Hayes, brilliant, Gardner, Graham, intercepted there by Wells, hacks his way through, Dogs down towards their attacking 50, Gian Siracusa has to get on his bike, Dawson, Ooh, to the ball. that's terrible. Isn't it amazing to think how one kick of the Sharon could have changed not only one team forever, but the competition itself? Some prime examples of that could be Lenny Hayes' kick to Stephen Milne in 2010, Matthew Scarlett's toe poke to Gary Ablett in 2009, or even something as small as a kick down the line in the dying moments of a game. Something that's exhibited in nearly every single match. But the kick I'm talking about in this video is Daniel Gian Syracuse's miss in the late stages of the 2009 preliminary final against St Kilda. He kicks the goal, the Bulldogs likely flood their backline and they hold off the surging Saints, beating the best team of that year and face the Cats in the big dance the week after. But instead, he pulls the kick and it slingshots down St Kilda's end. Rewalt Soccer's one off the ground and we all know what happens next. After a stellar season in 2008, finishing third on the ladder with a record of 15, six and one, the Doggies were eliminated in the preliminary final by Geelong in an entertaining game at the G. This left them with a fire burning bright, yet deep, ready and wanting to right the wrongs of the previous year in 2009. They started off well, winning their first three games and showing that they were going to be right in the conversation alongside those who finished above them the previous year. And with one of the best lists in club history, this team was primed to perform on the big stages. To compare them with the other teams that were successful enough to make the preliminary finals that year, they lost to the Saints twice in round six by 28 points and by 45 points in round 17. They lost to Geelong by two points in round nine, but beat them by 14 points in round 21. And against fellow preliminary final loser Collingwood, they lost by a point in round 15, but finished strong against them in round 22, defeating the Pies by four goals. Coming off a win over the Pies in the week previous, the Western Bulldogs hit the Cats head on at the G in the second qualifying final. A 14 point win to the Cats meant they had the wood over the Dogs and sent them into the semis to play Brisbane. The Doggies arose to that challenge and put together a 51 point clinic against the Lions, sending a message to both St Kilda and Geelong that their loss the week previous only made them stronger. This takes us to Etihad Stadium on a cold and wet Friday night on the 18th of September. The Doggies were quick out of the gate and kept the Saints goalless to quarter time. They held a lead to half time but a sensational third term saw the latter leaders take the lead at three quarter time by under a goal. The Dogs started off hot and a vintage Brad Johnson goal put the Dogs up and there was a belief within this team. Nick Rewalt put the Saints back in front 10 minutes later and they led by two points. Enter Daniel Gian Syracuse. Gets the handball over the top from Gilby from 35 out, coming back, just misses to the left hand side. If that goes through for a goal, ball goes back to the middle and the dogs flood their defensive half, making it impossible for the Saints to score and win the game. In reality, a congested ball makes its way forward. Pack flies, Montagna to Rewalt, guess who? The Saints win and go through to their first grand final since 1997. That loss hurt the dogs a lot. Scott Welsh retired afterwards, and sure, they got Barry Hall, but imagine how much more they could have gotten if that goal went through. They could have beaten Geelong. Absolutely they could have. Three close games throughout the year, and they just beat the team to beat in the preliminary final. It was destined to boil over, but it didn't. In 2010, the Dogs returned to the finals, again fourth, but this time there was something missing. They were belted by Collingwood in both week one of the finals and in the first round of the season. Club legends Brad Johnson and Nathan Eagleton retired. Jason Ackermanis sacked. Their CEO left and the decline of the Dogs began. In 2011, they finished 12th. In 2012, they finished 15th. We all know what happened in 2016, coming from 14th in 2015 and winning the flag from 7th. And that's still a massive achievement, but how much different could it have been? The Dogs win the Premiership in 2009, Barry Hall arrives, maybe Scott Welsh doesn't retire, maybe Daniel Cross doesn't go to Melbourne at all, and maybe, just maybe, the Dogs return to the top of the mountain for season 2010. It's amazing how many situations are faced with a what if. 
what if this or that and it's interesting to think how things could have been different as opposed to how they turned out. Sometimes all it comes down to is how many times the Sharon spins. It's over. It's all over. The drought. The damn wall is busted. It's 62 long years. 